Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video we will start the front-end web development learning path. So let's get this started. Alright, so this is an introductory video for the series and in the series we are going to cover the concepts of HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript and Angular. And in order to learn all of these things, you need to first understand a few concepts and also install a few softwares. So let's start by doing so. Alright, so the first thing that you need to know is how the browser and the websites work. Meaning that whenever you try to open a website, where does the browser get the data from and how does it show it to you? In order to know that, you need to first understand a few things. One of them being that the website is nothing but a bunch of files. And these files generally include an audio file, a video file and an image file. And apart from these assets, it also consists of a code file which bundles all of these assets together and makes up the website. And this code file is generally written in the language of HTML which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And these files are not on your system. If they were on your system then you might have accessed them by right clicking on them or double clicking on them. But since they are not on your website that means they have to be stored somewhere else. And the location where these files are stored is called as a server. And a server is nothing but a system without a monitor, a keyboard or a mouse. But instead it has a very powerful processor and also has a lot of RAM and a lot of storage space. So we keep all of our files inside the server and that makes the files accessible from anywhere in the world. But the main problem here is that how does a browser know which server to look for for the files? Because there are a lot of servers inside the world wide web. So to make it easy for the browser to identify the server, we use a unique name for each and every server. So similar to how our homes have their house number and house address using which we can search for the house in the Google Maps. Similar to that, we also have an address associated to each and every server. That address is called as an IP address. And using this IP address, we can identify which server that is you're trying to connect to. For example, you can search for the publicly available IP address of Google and you can copy and paste that inside your browser. And if you click on enter, then that's going to open your Google search. And that is similar to how you open the Google search using the google.com name. All of this is well and good, but it becomes a tedious task when you have to remember the IP address of each and every website that you want to visit. So in order to make this simpler, what they have done is that they've created a record which contains all of the IP addresses and their associated domain names. And this record is known as a domain naming system. It is similar to the telephone directory that we generally use to find out the phone number based on a particular name. So the whole process is something like this. Whenever you search for a website inside the browser, the browser takes that name and goes to the domain naming system that is the DNS records and searches for the IP address associated with this particular domain. And using that IP address, it goes to the location of that server and asks the server for the website files. Then the server searches for those files and sends it back to the browser. Then the browser accepts those files and generates a website and shows it to the user. And this is what is happening behind the scenes whenever you try to open a website inside your browser. Now in order to get started with this, there is one thing that you need to install and that is a code editor. So if you want, you can use a natively available text editor as well like Notepad, but it's preferred to use a code editor like Visual Studio Code. So now let's open the browser and search for Visual Studio Code. Open the first link and in that go to the download section and then download the VS code for whichever operating system that you're using. Once you have that downloaded, click on the downloaded icon and the installation process should start. Once you're done with the installation, open the VS code and this is the interface that you're going to be presented with when you open it for the first time. So the main benefit of using VS code is that it has a lot of extensions that you can install. So now let's open the extension editor. So in the left hand side menu, click on the last icon and that's going to open the extensions menu. And in that you can search for a few extensions. The first one that we can install is called as live server. So this is the extension. So you can click on install and the extension will be installed. So this live server is something that we can use pretty often. And I'm going to explain what it's used for in the upcoming videos. Apart from this, you can also install a few other extensions to make your programming workflow a lot easier. The first one being bracket pair colorizer 2. So it's the second version of the bracket pair colorizer. You can install that and that's going to automatically colorize your tags. So if you have an if condition or something like that, then it's going to automatically give a color to the opening and closing brackets of each and every block. So the next one is prettier. So this is a code formatter, which is going to automatically modify your code to make it look good. And the last two extensions are auto rename and auto closing tag. So this is the first extension and this is the second one. So these are specific for HTML. So this will be quite useful when you're trying to type in the HTML code. So these are some of the extensions that you need to install. All right, so before closing this off, I just wanted to say that this video was made in collaboration with Packet Prep. So Packet Prep is a training and placement company located in Hyderabad. 
and these videos were specifically made for the job guarantee training program that they have going on right now and that is the full stack java developer program so apart from these free video lectures they also have some premium content as well like lecture notes practice and test papers for you to get better at your core concepts and they also have offline as well as online classes for this program and they also conduct multiple demo sessions as well so you can attend any of these demo sessions and understand the things they are teaching as well as the training approach first hand so if you are interested i provided the website link in the description down below you can go there and check them out so that's it for this video guys i hope you have liked what you have seen till now if you did then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well thanks so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next video